Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Waves 2 as Italy. So we're no longer at war and we're just kind of in the post-war uh, stage. We're rebuilding a couple of our heavy ships with the best fire control we can put on them. Uh, we're a few months away from having our new destroyers out. Not too far away from having the second of uh, this of the uh, the Air One class uh, fleet carrier, the Martin, come off the slips. So not too bad, actually. Not too bad. We also just got our submarine force now uh, built up, uh, which have a reliability of 121%, which is, I think, kind of ridiculous, but oh well. Uh, so yeah. Uh, also, once we get the Zara class finished building, uh, we'll restart production of them pretty soon. We're going to go ahead and replace the Carlo Alberto and the Giuseppe, who have been in Southeast Asia for years <laughs> for a very very long time so yeah uh yeah let's go to the next turn see what happens uh so we got search radar four fire control radar four so s-band radar improves radar capabilities okay so that should allow us a fairly good size like if we go to radar yeah we can have three yeah so let's go ahead and just put that on you uh, and we'll replace both of our heavy ships' radars with that. We'll just kind of go forward and let that uh, trickle on through the ranks. Alright. Let's keep going. International uh, Naval Intelligence Strongly Express... Uh... uh... Yeah, tension and less rebels. Okay. Let's also check. How is Great Britain in terms of carriers? Very good. Very good. They're much better than us in carriers. They still have the strongest navy in the world. Uh, and they... Though their carriers are actually mostly mediocre, only their latest one rivals ours in terms of the illustrious in terms of actual air wing size. So that's something to keep in mind. There's the oddballs done with her reconstruction. New Austrian heavy cruiser is pretty good, actually. Uh, one more month and our battleship will be finished her rebuild. Yeah, a lot of people are getting rid of their uh, battle cruiser, except the French. The French are actually rebuilding and making new battle cruisers. So that's something. They also got rid of one of their uh, carriers, and the Austrians got rid of all their carriers. So that's interesting. Hmm. Uh, arrest any other citizens found in Sumatra. Okay, we got a thousand spare ducats. Four months a few. Got 22,000, so we'll go ahead and resume construction of you. And just keep going with that. Ah. <sighs> Smatron Rebellion. Okay. Still a year out for the new Air One class. I also want to check. Can we build a carrier with a with an angled deck now? So deck pack, lift edges. It's not an option for it, so I'm assuming we just add them. Apparently it's not registering it, so I guess we don't get angled decks. Which kind of sucks. Oh well, because I would have liked to have like a, an actual like modern aircraft carrier in the Navy. That would have been nice. Defeated the Italian Fortress, ah, so now we lost that. You know what, quietly. Sumatran Rebellion succeeded. We'll get it back eventually. Okay, new destroyer finished. New Austrian light carrier. 11 aircraft. Ugh. It's really shitty. Well, we could also... Like, let's see. Open design for a rebuild. So if we replace the machinery on the Crimson Assar, we get 200 tons spare. Place you with that. 
make these DP and auto loading four inchers. Give you director firing makes all of these much better. Put them in one gun turrets with the DP, so that gives us much better anti-aircraft capability. And can we get you with a better... No, we couldn't, we couldn't make it bulge to get us a little bit. Decreases this, the knots a little bit. Another, because of 600 tons. Bring you up. Or we could just go ahead and get rid of the Crimson SR class. Replace it with a newer light carrier. A newer escort carrier. Like, if we decided to go for a newer escort carrier, what would we do? Okay, how about... Uh, I want... A light carrier. Uh, must have at least four aircraft and no more than 34 aircraft and displacement of no more than 16,000 tons. No, okay. So let's go for 16,000 tons. Okay, we got that. Thirty-four. Okay, better fire control type. So clear turrets. Uh, no main guns. Okay, I'm trying to get this to work, but I think it's... Hmm. Okay, we got that going, so that looks a bit better. Clear turrets. Let's add... I guess a couple of double turret. Let's do... Let's do a couple of wings. Port and starboard wing. We'll do that. Then that's 26 knots. It's not too bad. We can also increase the weight just a little bit. 35. Or 34 aircraft is what I meant. Um, deck armor. Better fire control position. I don't know how to... Why is he not letting me do that? Um, too many main guns for a ship of this type. Okay, how about we do... You two. Delete turret. Delete turret. We'll also get some auto-loading. Okay, we've got plenty of spare. Go ahead and make you four. Uh, we could go ahead with some hanger armor. Maybe an inch. And an inch uh, or a hat. No, and no top armor there. And I cannot seem to get better fire control. So make that a auto-loading gun. Let's also go with three anti-aircraft guns. Or three anti-aircraft directors. A couple of heavies. And we'll do that. Okay. And that's our new light carrier. Or, no, no, hold on. Before we do that. Can add port and starboard. There we go. Okay, we got plenty there. We can decrease that by... There we go. That's perfect. We don't have the fire control type. We'll have to do that in post, I guess, because, uh, yeah, override that. Save. All right, now we're researching that, and that'll be the replacement for the uh, Crimson Asar class in the Navy. Uh, and it'll also be rivaling the Orca class. 
I won't be too far behind the Mikey R in terms of like size, in all honesty. So yeah, okay, got that going. Okay, next turn. There goes the Luigi. Uh, a scandal involving some important dangers from Austria Hungary at Party Goon. Uh, embarrass Austria Hungary. This is chance, no missiles are in the game yet. Okay, just keep going. During training, our accident at MSM has, has, has torpedoed and sank our destroyer. There are unfortunately no clues. No doubt in my mind. Germany. Okay, new light carrier. Got to replace three, so we'll put all three of them down. Oof. Germany didn't like that. Okay. How many more months? Eight more months. Germany's apparently sending a force. No concern of ours. Uh, counter jump the Russia's stolen technology. Uh, who gives a shit? Yeah. So they took both of those areas there. Not like it matters too much to us right now. Okay, more destroyers coming off. It is the end of year 1955. The game is over. Whew. Regular game is over. If you want to, you can continue playing, but technological development will level out, and some f uh, functions may not work properly if played too long beyond 1925. Okay, that's a holdover. If you continue, you can end the game at any time by pressing the resign button. Uh, there will be a hard cut from 1970. I think we will go ahead and end the game now. So let's think about this. Wars and Prestige. 1900 to 1930. We had a war with Austria-Hungary. Uh, I'm thinking this is Tonnage. Well, no, this is Prestige. This is Prestige, so... A lot of prestige gained in night after the war with uh with Austria Hungary peaked there started going down leveled off a little bit after the war with Russia kept going up and up and up and then the war with uh, the war with France and the U S in nineteen looks like nineteen eighteen raised up a lot then kind of leveled off there and then we had the huge war with France where we lost a lot in the early war. And then we just climbed back up and came out on top in the end. 1920, we started off here. We got another war with France. Or no, is this... No, it overlaps, and then we got that. Uh, and then a small war with France there. A little bit of, of uh, no war. Then war with the U.S. and France. And down, up, leveled out, ended it kind of low. Kept going. This was a loss. That was a win. That was a, These were two neutral uh, wars. This was a loss to us. Gained a lot and then lost a lot. And kind of leveled off around the 50s. Then in 1940, we were with Austria-Hungary. Got to our highest. Then the coup happened and we went down. And then we kind of uh, went r kind of right around there. Is, uh, it was around the 45 areas where we rested. Fleet tonnage. So we're looking at... We're the red line. So yeah. Nobody really did a lot to... Uh, to a lot of people there. Austria-Hungary never really did a lot. Um, just kind of through there. We're the red line. That's where we lost a whole bunch. Then they lost a lot and we kind of leveled out. We still had more than they did apparently. Uh, then just kind of kept going. We were still pretty low in terms of tonnage compared to a lot of other places, but the Mediterranean just looks like everybody in the Mediterranean. So we had the uh, the light blue, the dark blue, and the red. It's basically the Mediterranean was its own game, and we all kind of stayed neck and neck with each other and weren't really competing with the outside world all that much. And in the end, we were not too bad. It looks like the U.S. or not. It looks like the Russians and the Germans were pretty neck and neck. The uh, British. Scrapped a whole bunch of theirs. The U.S. just kind of stayed up in the top. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, economically, 
Yeah, look, we're looking at these three lines here, and we're all pretty pretty similar throughout this. We can see we're all going up at around the same rate. From the looks of it, okay, we got light blue is just France, red is me, purple is Russia. So we're all just kind of staying around this area. Austria-Hungary staying well behind. Okay. And in the end, everybody kind of... Yeah, we had like a couple of packs. Austria-Hungary again was the real loser in terms of uh, economy. The U.S. capped out at 100 million uh, towards the end there. Summary of ships lost. Okay. Summary of ships lost. Uh, Italy lost four battleships in the entire in the entire game. Five battle cruisers. No pre-dreadnoughts. Four cruisers. No CVs or okay, so no carriers of any type. Twelve light cruisers. Forty-three destroyers. Thirty-four corvettes. Eight hundred and seventy-one auxiliaries. No transports and ninety-two subs. Great Britain lost two battleships, three battle cruisers, one pre-dreadnought. One light cruiser, three destroyers, no corvettes, no auxiliaries, no transports or subs. France lost six battleships and four battle cruisers, no pre dreadnoughts, no heavy cruisers, no uh, carriers of any sort. Six uh, light cruisers, 32 destroyers, 44 corvettes, 675 auxiliaries, six transports. And 44 subs. Austria Hungary lost two battle cruisers, a pre dreadnought, a couple of heavy cruisers, one light carrier, no carriers, six light cruisers, 44 destroyers, 29 corvettes, 459 auxiliaries, no transports, and 90, or, uh, I was reading mine, 87 subs. Russia lost a heavy cruiser, a couple of auxiliaries, and sub. Germany lost a battleship, battle cruiser, no pre dreadnoughts, no heavy cruisers, cor carriers, one uh, light cruiser, five destroyers, Corvette, nothing else. U.S. lost a battle cruiser, a destroyer, a couple of Corvettes, 204 auxiliaries, and 19 subs. So, I mean, we didn't do the worst. Uh, we inflicted the most battleship losses on the French. And if we include the U.S. and French together, we equaled them in terms of battle cruiser losses that we inflicted upon them. Uh, Pre-Dreadnoughts didn't really get a lot of love in this game. Heavy cruisers. Also, apparently we never sank a, a French heavy cruiser, which actually makes sense because they were a huge deficit. Though we did sink a shitload of them uh, for the Austro-Hungarians. Uh, a light carrier, so only one in the whole game was sank, and that was for the Austro-Hungarians. Um, we lost the most light cruisers out of everybody, but we used ours very offensively, and we used them as kind of like raiders and and uh, and these guerrilla uh, in these guerrilla tactics during our wars with France uh, and the U.S. So I can kind of see that uh, destroyers again. We kind of. We didn't lose in term. We, we didn't lose the most, but we were close. Uh, but again, we used our destroyers very offensively, so I can kind of see why. Uh, Corvettes. I'm surprised we lost that many Corvettes, but I think most of that was because of Austria-Hungary and their submarine uh, actions, uh, because most of the ones we lost were due to events, if I remember right. Whereas the French and Austro-Hungarians, they lost their corvettes mostly due to direct action. Because we did kill a shitload of French corvettes in Southeast Asia. Uh, over here, I was pointing at the wrong line. Auxiliaries, I can kind of see that. A lot of those, we lost a, a couple hundred in the war with, when Austria-Hungary first got in with all their subs. Transports, I'm not sure what's considered a light transport, but uh, we did sink a couple of those during an invasion the France tried to do. So I can understand that. Submarines, it surprises me, actually. We lost so many subs. But then again, we had a problem where our subs would just die as soon as they came off the slips. So we had that. I'm, I'm glad we killed so many Austria uh, of, Aust of the Austro-Hungarian naval uh, subs. That's really nice. Same thing with the French and a couple of the U.S. So that's nice. Not the worst, not the best. But I think we ended very strong. Very, very strong. So... Uh, Prestige, in recognition of your service, the Navy will name a new aircraft carrier the uh, Admiralgo. 
And we're gonna, I'm sure that's something like Admiral in Italian. Roach. Yeah, so 45 prestige. We could have gotten 60. We could have gotten 60, but we didn't support the coup. We didn't support the coup, and that was our problem. So yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, there's not a lot we can really do. I think, uh, I think if that last war, I think if it wasn't the RNG of the peace treaty, we would have won that easily enough. I could have definitely seen us getting NAM. And if we could have forced it into an actual peace screen where we got, uh, points, I would have retaken these two possessions and get East Africa back. I think, though, if we look at it, Italy is better off than when we started. They have Dal the Dalmatian coast, so um, uh, Dalmatia, so we've got like all this long here. We never took Albania because uh, we never got a pop-up for it, which I, I wish we could have kind of done so. Uh, and we never got Greece, uh, though Germany somehow got Greece. Um, there are definitely decreased foreign influence in here. Uh, the UK or Great Britain only has two bases in the med anymore oh no they have three they have three in the med malta gibraltar and egypt but they lost cyprus uh i would definitely say it's a it's a toss-up between the french and the italian navies in terms of p uh, power in the mediterranean and that's well i'd say it's possibly a toss-up it depends on if the french focus in the med because they have northern europe to worry about so i'm saying we probably we have the largest navy in the mediterranean at any one point in time uh so we've got that going for us the italians also gained holdings in southeast asia we used to have south korea we didn't get it back though uh, we also had sumatra but we lost that to a rebellion uh, but again, also we decreased foreign influence in this area. We, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say because of our influence in the area, we were able to push the U S out of the Philippines. Cause I think we did support them a couple of times. Uh, and I think, didn't we do that to Sumatra as well with the British? I'm not sure either way or no, we didn't. Uh, but either way, I think, I think it was, it was a good game. It was a very good game. I just wish we could have held on to our holdings a little bit more, but uh, yeah, I, I, I like I like how this is going. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another series on this right after off the bat. Uh, I could see myself doing one, maybe another country, or maybe because there are a couple of countries available that aren't in this. I mean, we could play as uh, obviously the uh, the Japanese if we wanted to. Uh, any one of these nations here. Uh, there's also the Spanish, uh, there's also the Confederate States as an option, which would have been kind of interesting. I'm not sure how that would work as a game. That would definitely be harder. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think, I think I had fun here and I hope all of you also enjoyed watching this, uh, as we played through it, uh, through both the successes and failures of Admiral, of Grand Admiral Roach, who at this point in the, must be in his seventies. Uh, as he retires from the Navy or has just keeled over and died finally. Uh, I do like the story of the fact that we have maintained the Sicily, a ship that was launched more than 40 years ago at this point and still is commissioned into the Navy with the latest radar as well. Um, so that's great. Uh, I am sorry if uh, I, I know a couple of people lost their ships. I know uh, Mikey uh, we lost we lost the lead ship of your class, uh, which would have been a really nice class, but they never got to fight except uh, except this this third one that we still had being built at the time. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward if we do play another one to have a, to having more Patreons that I can name after uh, that I can name ships after because that was a really fun thing. Uh, but yeah. Not much else really to say. I'm just going to go ahead and save this. Not sure why, but uh, yeah. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you liked it, please leave a comment down below. Hit the like button. If you want to help support the channel, consider the subscribe button down below. As well as take a look at the description down below where I have links to my Discord and my Patreon page. But I'll see all of you in the next series. Bye.